Earlier today, the U.S. House of Representatives voted 216 to 208 to pass a bill that would make Washington, D.C. the 51st state in America. The party line vote followed some heated debates on the House floor that included an accusation that Republican opposition was, you guessed it, laced with racism or racist trash. Joining me to talk about the bill in today's D.C. statehood debate is Congressman James Comer of Kentucky, the ranking member on the House Oversight Committee and the floor manager for today's House debate. Representative Comer, welcome back to Washington Watch. It's great to be back. All right. Your remarks on the floor today, you jumped right into what this bill is about, H.R. 51. Uh, let's start off with that. What is this about? It's about one thing. It's about creating two new U.S. Senate seats for the Democratic Party, two seats that will allow the House, House Democrats to pass their liberal, radical, socialist agenda. I mean, this is more of the power grab. Uh, that they it's have all, been pursuing since the election. That's exactly right. You just look in the last week, uh, they passed D.C. statehood out of the House. They filed a bill to stack the Supreme Court. You know, they're trying to federalize our elections. Uh, everything that's coming out of the U.S. House of Representatives now is being passed on a party line vote. And it's the most liberal, radical agenda that I've seen in my lifetime. So, Congressman Comer, let me ask you this question. Is H.R. 51 even constitutional? No, it's not. Uh, the founding fathers were very clear that they wanted the capital city independent of any state. There are many references to the capital city in the U.S. Constitution. No other state that was formed was ever mentioned in the Constitution previously. And the big reason it's not constitutional is the 23rd Amendment. The 23rd Amendment grants Washington, D.C., three, three electoral college votes. So if H.R. 51 passes the Senate and is signed into law by President Biden, Washington, D.C. would have six electoral college votes because H.R. 51 still includes the Capitol enclave because it's been referenced in the Constitution so many times, they have to have something about the U.S. Capitol independent of anything. So they they shrank Washington, D.C. to what they call the Capitol Enclave, which includes the, the National Mall, the U.S. Capitol, some of the monuments, and then the White House. The only resident in America that would live in the Capitol Enclave would be the first family. So the new Washington, D.C. state would get three new electoral college votes by virtue of it being a state. And then the capital city, the old Washington, D.C., would have free electoral college votes. So that would mean that Hunter Biden, Jill Biden, and Joe Biden would have an electoral college vote. It's ridiculous. It'll never hold up in court. But yet the Democrats are so desperate to do anything to try to pass their liberal socialist agenda. It'd probably be just another one of those blue states with their handout, because if you look at the financial support, a lot of that comes from the federal government. They actually, I mean, they, they cover a lot of what takes place in the infrastructure in this city. They do. And the city doesn't pay for its uh, incarcerated population. They have between 6,000 and 8,000 incarcerated people. Well, that, you, that you want, your colleagues yeah. are going to do away with that. We're not going to be incarcerating people anymore. Well, they've, they've made a big dent on the incarcerated population. It's funny how uh, crime goes up when you let uh, prisoners out of jail. It's amazing but how that works. That's another story. Yeah, that's another story. But another thing, what bankrupts a lot of states, like my home state of Kentucky and uh, Illinois, is the unfunded pension liability. Congress picked up the tab a long time ago for the pension liability for the city workers of Washington, D.C. So they would become state workers. Is Washington going to stop paying for that? Well, they, is that are, a part of the they, deal? Is, yeah. is that a part of the well, deal? That you know, no, they, they don't wouldn't want to... answer that. They said, yeah, they said they'd take care of They'd discuss that later on. Just like the 23rd Amendment, Jamie Raskin said when I brought up the 23rd Amendment during the committee markup, he said, yeah, that you know, we'll have to obviously do away with the 23rd Amendment because – the uh, you know, we can't have six electoral college votes in Washington, D.C. They would at least agree with that. He said, we'll do that after the after the bill is passed. Well, I don't trust them to do that after the bill is passed. There's already a precedent for how you undo a constitutional amendment. And that was prohibition when prohibition was uh, uh, put into the Constitution. And then Congress decided to uh, end prohibition. 
what did they do? They had to pass another constitutional amendment to end prohibition. So the same thing would have to happen with the 23rd Amendment. But you know what? Americans won't go for that. Right. Th right. There's no support for D.C., and it's just uh, it, it's just going to add uncertainty to the next election. If this became a state before the next election and those three electoral college votes, extra electoral college votes through the 23rd Amendment are still lingering out there, you think the Democrats won't use those yeah. extra three electoral college votes if they need them? Of course yeah, they will. I, I'm certain that this would not be on the top of their list if D.C. were a Republican uh, area. Uh, there's no question. I mentioned about that. that on the House floor. That I, I said, I wonder if you all would have the same passion to make Washington D.C. a state if it were 90 percent Republican instead of 90 percent Democrat. Yeah, uh, then, yeah, I know the answer to that. Hey, very quickly, we've just got about a minute left. What's your response to the accusation that Republicans oppose D.C. statehood for uh, for, for the reason of racism? I am so sick and tired of being called a racist, uh, being insinuated that my opposition to their radical socialist agenda is because I'm a racist or a white supremacist. That, that's the card they play every time. Yeah. But the funny thing is, Steny Hoyer, the majority leader, their leader, he voted against D.C. statehood in 1993. So was he a racist then? And he's you know changed his uh, ideology since then? I don't think so. This is just another card they play to try to pass their radical agenda. You know what? And I think Americans are getting tired of them playing that card on everything because it's a discussion stopper. You play that card and nothing yeah. else can be said. Exactly. And, you know, they, they play it when they need to. Uh, if, if one of them says something offensive then, and uh, a Republican calls them out, then, then we're a racist, yeah, you know, and yeah. it, it's just not, it's not good government. It's, it's something that, as you said, I think the majority of Americans are sick and tired of. Well, Congressman Comer, thanks so much for joining us today and for, uh, for fighting for constitutional government in our country. We'll keep doing it.